Hello, I'm Tony Alcott, and welcome to The Art of Bowls. So far in this series, we've dealt exclusively with singles play. But more important to me is team play. We're all involved in team play, whether at club, county, or international level. Team play involves ladies. And to assist me to demonstrate this point, I've brought along my great friend, world champion, Margaret Johnson. Hello, Margaret. Hi, Tony. Nice to see you. Tell me, I must ask you, how did you actually get into this game of bowls? Well, 26 years ago, the local minister was starting up a short mat bowling club in the village where I lived. So I just went along for more or less of a night out. And um, it just started from that. It took me a long time, it was just a couple of nights a week. And uh, now, uh, short mat is big business in Northern Ireland. We have 1,030 clubs affiliated to our association, and there's an average of 36 to 40 bowlers in each club, which makes 40,000 bowlers. And um, short mat is popular in the north because it is uh, an inexpensive game. You pay seven or eight pound for your club membership, and um, you don't need a uniform. All you need is flat shoes, and you can play with your husband or your brother or sister, and kids from the age of eight. Uh, up to the age of 80 can play it and uh, no restrictions. Right. The, the, the short mat, it, it's as the name suggests, is it a permanent structure? Because I've never played it actually. No, no, it's just a mat. It's 40 to 45 feet long, 6 foot wide, and uh, you can roll it up after each session. And uh, most clubs have 3 to 4 mats, and uh, we have quite a lot of competitions in the north. And you could be out 4, 5, 6 nights a week playing competitions. It is uh, an amateur sport and we are not allowed to accept money. But you get some good prizes like portable colour televisions, uh, Waterford Crystal, Drone nice. Crystal, Ainsley, right. uh, China. Super. Yeah. D did you, um, when you play on a short mat, obviously you don't need as much power behind the bowler, obviously for the distance. That's right. Did you find <laughs> that helped you when you played in New Zealand, where you in fact got gold medals in, in the World Championship there? Yes, uh, it does. It helps you to keep your weight down. And, uh, but you find you can adjust your weight to a faster green than you can to a heavy green. Really? Because um, it is difficult in New Zealand, isn't it? It is, I mean, yes. People, uh, even experienced players, just have no idea what yeah. it's like, have they? No. Well, it's not the speed of the green, it's the wind that I find a wee bit hard to cope with out there. But um, the New Zealand ones and Australians, they find it very difficult when they come here to the UK because, as I said, you can adjust to a lighter green better than you can adjust to a heavy green. Why do you think that is? Why, why do you think that's, that you, know, you can actually adjust to, to, a, to a lighter green or a faster green than yeah. a heavy green? Well, uh, I think here in our indoor and outdoor, you have to adjust to short ends and long ends. And... Uh, we, out there, the weight's more uniform than it is here. And uh, if we play the short ends here, then that's the long end out in New Zealand, right. Australia. Right, yeah. Tell me, Margaret, one of the things that I know you can cope with very well, and that's playing against male bowlers. And sometimes women feel very inhibited when they're actually against a, a male player. Well, I, I really enjoy bowling against the men. Because I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you and I had a great game. Yeah. Um, I uh, find it improves my game. And unfortunately, I don't get the competition at home that I need to keep me at the standard that I think that I should be playing at. And uh, I really enjoy my competitions against the men. Yeah, I, I mean, having said that the competition, I mean, I, do I hear you saying to me that you find it better to competition to play against male bowlers than, it, than against women bowlers, for example? Well, the majority of women, they just go out more for a social evening and uh, they talk about their knitting and their bacon and their <laughs> what they did. And the men, they don't talk, they just, they're in there to practice and that's what they're there for. Right. And I really need that practice to keep me up to the standard that, that's required of me. Right. When we last played against each other, it, it was, as you say, it was a tremendous game. Yeah. And of course, you've played against, you know, some of the top men yes. before and given them an awful fright. Some male players may find, quite, quite, may find it quite inhibiting to play against um, yourself. I mean, I actually um, enjoyed it, and to me it doesn't really matter, but there is a certain amount of pressure on the male player, I feel, because there are certain male bowlers who feel that a man bowler, whatever the standard, should always beat a female bowler. 
Yes, uh, I find that uh, it's not the men themselves, but it's the friends that keep them going because they've been beaten by a woman. But I do think that's fair because it is a sport uh, that everybody can be equal in. And us women, we're not there to prove that we can beat the men. We just want to prove that we can bowl as well as the men. I'm sure you can more than prove that, Margaret. And I'll tell you what, being a perfect gentleman, I'll give you the jack and prove to me that you can beat me on this end. Right. You're on. Do you think there's any advantage, Margaret, of actually, at the beginning of a game, if you win the toss, you've got the option, haven't you? Yes. Getting the jack or having the last ball. I mean, what do you invariably do? Well, on the, the outdoor and the indoor, I take the jack, but in short mat, I give the jack away. Why is that? Well, uh, in the short mat, you have the last ball, and uh, sometimes it's very important in the short mat. But uh, in this, you have your own distance indoor and outdoor you have your own distance to play to and um, usually in the trial ends in indoor and outdoor you know if your opposition is a heavy bowler or a short jack bowler so then you either put up your long jack or your short jack to put them off in the first end. Right. In the short mat you, you place your jack on a line right. so it doesn't make really much difference oh. but um, the trial ends should tell you a lot of your opposition. That's right I mean we always get a trial end, yes. you know, sometimes in television games we get two or three, but generally speaking in ordinary games, even club games, we always get one trial end in one direction and yes. one trial in the other, don't we? And uh -huh. it does tell you a lot, doesn't it? It does, yes. And a lot of people don't use the information. That's right, that's true. Okay. I see why you've bowled a short jack. That's a cracking <laughs> opening ball, Margaret. <laughs> a little bit heavier, but that'll keep, as they say. Yes, it will. It's a good back ball, good position. Played again. Well played. Margaret, I've noticed that the bowls you use are larger than mine. Yes, I bowl with a six standard. Crikey, your hands yeah. are smaller as well. Yeah, well, uh, I started the short mat in the sixth standard, and I tried to come down to a five standard, and it was like different with a completely, it's a different game, so I had to go back to my sixes, and I find that a six being a big bowl is harder to move out of the head. It certainly is. Then, <laughs> yeah, some of the ladies bowl with a one and a two, and if you touch them at all, away they go. But the reason, but you. A lot of people would bowl with a, sh a small bowl because they've got a small hand. Uh -huh. I mean, obviously, any advice you would give to perhaps a lady that's got a very small hand and feels that they can't manage such a large bowl that, that, as, for example, that you bowl with? Well, um, it all depends how comfortable your bowl feels in your hand. And I find a lot of people are surprised that I bowl with such a big bowl, but I find it's comfortable. And uh, the results that I'm getting are quite good at the moment. And uh, I think that uh, if you find a bowl that's comfortable, it might be slightly larger than what you have, but um, just use it. Well, I'm, I bowl with a five-inch bowl, and I, I bowl with heavyweight bowls, which yes. gives me this, in fact, you're, you said that yours is a standard, in fact, yes. it's, it's a medium weight, isn't it? Yeah. So, in fact... But equal in weight. It will be. Yeah. Although your bowl's larger than this one, this one is the same weight as yours because yeah. this is heavy weight and yours is the normal yeah. weight. Well, the um, out in New Zealand and Australia, I bowl with the five heavy weight yes. because they they, rec they recommend the heavy weight for their conditions. Yes, because the heavy weight bowls yeah. is, is more embedded on onto the very fine That's surface right. and uh -huh. less affected by the wind because it's heavier. Yes, and uh, I'm not actually changing my bowl because they're of equal weight. Might be a size smaller, but the heavy weight 
uh, makes up for the six standards, so that's, that's why I use it. Right, well those uh, two bowls which are size six are right in front of the jack and they look like footballs. <laughs> That's a bad ball, Margaret. I f I'm finding this morning that this stadium is a lot warmer and consequently the green seems a lot faster than perhaps we've been playing on other days. It does affect, the heat does affect greens, doesn't it? Yes, uh, so much so. That's why you beat me that day in the UK. Because <laughs> Thank you. Somebody opened a, a door and the green got heavy and I didn't catch on that uh, it was that wee bit dead. Yeah, th actually mm -hmm. they did during that game, yeah, didn't they? The, they did. the fire exits came yeah. in, the, in the Preston Guildhall, the fire exits opened letting um, cold air into the building and consequently these greens which are made of, of man-made fibres yeah. um, they, they contract and expand with, with uh, uh, heat, the heat, don't yes. they? Well that was my excuse then. Oh, hold on. Yeah. You've got no, I've got no excuses yes. here. <laughs> if my husband would say you took a rush of blood to your head with that yeah, I think I did. <laughs> Dearie me, Margaret, you're going to give me a chance? Not if I can help it. <laughs> Good. Mr. Marker, could you tell me which uh, is actually the shot bowl there and how far is it short? That's the shot bowl, Tony, 18 inches from the jack. Right, thank you. Oh, thank you, Margaret, you give me about uh, 18 inches. Nice that you can have somebody from the other rink to actually come yes. and mark for you. you, don't have, you know, when you're practicing, you don't have that luxury, do you, really? True, true. You know, Margaret, I think I'm still overweight. I'm not taking any sympathy on you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go have a look at that? Because um, yes. I don't really want to look at it because it's, I've made such a shambles of it. But um, Oh dear, Margaret, it seems to uh, get worse the farther you come up here and have a look at it. Um, this is a classic example, isn't it, where you, well, I'm actually caught cold on the very first end, which often happens, actually, yes. surprisingly enough, and, and I'm in real trouble. But let's think about, your, you know, the, your next shot. You've got a last bowl and you're already lying three, and I haven't got anything near. Well, I'd be trying to get another bowl near the jack because... Uh, you have another one, and you can either play the, run, the yard on shot and split those two and run in for shot, or you could change your backhand and draw in up to that board and get the shot too. There's so many chances. Uh, I also need to get um, round the back again between that jack and the ball in case you take the jack back and I lose the count of four. Right, right. So instead of lifting four, I could lose four. Right. I mean, a lot of people looking at this head would think, wow, it's a great opportunity for, for the white player, the player with the white stickers, because the jack goes through, um, there's four shots. But in realistic terms, um, it's going to take yeah. a fantastic bowl to swerve around there yes. to take the jack through. I mean, there's not a clear, what we would say, not a clear yeah, road right. to the jack, no. is there? It's obviously got to be one of these bowls hit yeah. onto the jack. And let's face it, if we were relying on hitting one of these bowls exactly onto that jack to play it through. It's got to be almost spot on, spot yeah. on hasn't it? And there's no room for error whatsoever. Yes, and uh, if he misses it, he's down four shots. But if he draws to cut down, he can maybe only lose one. Right. Uh, I would be, um, I would play the cut down shot rather yeah. than the yeah. taking the chance to carry it through. Right, I haven't actually told you what, what I intend to play, but I, I will if, if unless you put one right in my, my eye, I will in fact try and draw again because although I've had three bad attempts at actually drawing, the, the positive thing I'm thinking about is that I've actually got the line right to the jack. Yeah. My bowls have all finished on the right line. And if I reduce the weight, 
that's all I've got to think about. I've got that's the line, it's, it's the weight. If I change to this hand and draw in here, this is fresh territory. Yes. I'm not really sure. I've only had one trial end. I'm not really sure what that's going to do. And the alternative, as you said, would be to play weight onto your bowls, ideally to split and to run through. But um, at the moment, I've got a clear draw in there. Yeah, yes. Unless, of course, I block you, it. you put a bowl in mm -hmm. there. So I suppose at this moment in time, I can't fully decide what I'm doing. And all I know is that I'm not very confident. I'll watch you play your bowl. Well, Margaret, I see you're taking no chances and you've uh, plopped a back bowl in there. Well, I must admit it went farther than I intended. I was looking between the jack and your back bowl. But it'll do no harm there. But it leaves you plenty of room to draw. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, if I, in the meantime, me watching you play that bowl, if I decided perhaps to play onto those bowls mm -hmm. in the front to, to take the jack through, then um, there's one there that's right in the middle of my white bowl. It's going that's to reduce right. the yeah. count. But I'm going to see if I can try and just adjust the weight, keeping the same line, and, and draw the shot. But um, as I said before, when you've bowled three bowls and you haven't got it, yes. you know, you've only got the one, one chance, yes. haven't you? And if you miss it, I still get the three shots. And Don't remind three me. Three shots is hard to come. Oh, thank you, Save Margaret. The day. <laughs> yeah, that's a relief, and you certainly uh, yes. gave me a lot to think about. But in that situation, we really discussed it that it it was fairly simple, wasn't it? The fact course, is that yeah. I just had to think about yeah. the weight. Yeah. And you, with your last bowl, um, you had a number of options, didn't you? You know, I you you had, yeah. it, mine was really a simple one, and the fact that if, if I could keep the same line and just reduce the weight, um, then of course I'd, I'd be getting the shot. But but it. it, it it certainly tested me. Well, actually, I was trying to play the shot that you played, but I was overweight. And instead of being three up and one down, so it's a difference of four shots. Yeah. And uh, when you're playing uh, competitive bowls at the high level, you can't afford to make mistakes like that. No. Psychologically, if the shot bowl had been, that it is now, had been a red bowl, yeah. and I'd got one more bowl to play, then of course I'd have to sort of, I'd be going down to that mat and saying to you, or saying to myself rather, well I'm four down now, you know, I'm, and that is when we, what we say psychologically putting the pressure on, don't yes, we? We really uh -huh. put the pressure on, um, on, on our opponents and in a sense I suppose because you actually went through with your last bowl and left me an open head, um, it helped me in a, in a sense because I had okay. little to think about other than just reducing the weight. But even if I had to place the bowl for yours, as all you had to do was draw up to that bowl right. for the shot. It's not. It's well it clear then. Yeah, I, I was pleased with it. But yeah. um, having said that, I shouldn't be in that situation after all, should I, with the first three <laughs> bowls? Well, I find that if you catch the green right away in the competition, you fall away halfway through it. When you start to struggle, you concentrate better. And then you come on to your game. Yes, it's is about concentration, yes, isn't the game? Yes, 100% uh, concentration is one of the main things. All this. too often when we're in front, we, we tend to be yeah. a bit, relax a little yeah. bit, and, and we've got no, no pace to uh -huh. follow. You know, My we... secretary says that I go to sleep, so she could be right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Margaret, one of the interesting things that I found when I've actually been playing mixed bowls and in, perhaps in a mixed fours is that lady bowlers are often frightened to play the very heavy shot, yeah. the firing shot, um, is that because there's a physical difference between a man and a woman, or is it a psycho psychological one? 
Uh, but I don't think it's the physical side. Uh, I think most of the ladies think thinks it's not very ladylike to oh. be driving on a, <laughs> on a green. Uh, I must admit, I have more faith in a drawing shot or a yard on shot. But if the occasion arose, I would have a go. You I would. don't always uh, have a good result, but it pays you to be up sometimes. Right, and you, you do use it. You, know, I you do, do yes. use weight, uh -huh. don't you? Because you actually skip for Ireland, I ladies, do. indoors and outside. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what we'll do, Margaret. We'll set up a head where, in fact, both of us have got the opportunity of, of using weight. And perhaps you might describe to me how, in fact, um, you intend to use the weight and what you actually do, whether you change your delivery yeah. um, or, or, or what, whether, whether you actually change your action. Because uh -huh. some bowlers actually change their action from a Did drawing it? shot yeah. to, to, to a firing shot. Yeah. And also we can talk about the amount of weight that we might use in that particular instance. Don't make it too difficult. Okay. <laughs> well, Margaret, we've constructed this head I'm lying one shot with a back bowl, two short bowls, which are not really in the count, but you've got three very interesting bowls there. You would say as an experienced player that there are two options of this, in this head of shots to play, isn't there? There is. Um, you could play the, well, it all depended on your score. Uh, if it's in a league match and you needed two or three shots to win the game, you could play the the drive to take the back bowl out. Right, that's the shot one. Yes, which would bring you in three shots, possibly four. Or if you're all square and uh, you hadn't the confidence, which most ladies haven't got, to play that running shot to draw. And perhaps if they didn't miss the front bowls, they have two front bowls here to knock in, which would them. bring in possibly a shot. Right. Or alternatively, if they were really skillful, they could take the absolute wide line and they yeah. just might curl round this bowl on the outside of it um, and get the shot bowl. Yes. Uh -huh. If it wasn't um, necessary for you to actually get three shots in a singles game, for example, um, say you were perhaps level and it was the beginning of the game, yeah. which shot would you play then? Well, at the beginning of the game, I would try the draw shot because if it didn't come off right, the jack could go back and I'd lost two. At the moment, there's only one against me and one is easier to get back than two. Right, so you'd, you'd actually not sort of, you'd try not for yeah. rolling that bowl over into, into that position or, or drawing it. Or draw around, around it, yeah. Um, obviously, um, the weight shot, I feel, for me, is an easier option, surprisingly yeah. enough. Uh -huh. I feel that even if it was the beginning of the game, I would take a chance and look straight for that bowl and drive down with weight between the two bowls to take it out. But I think that perhaps reflects upon the style of my game, not because I'm a man and you're a woman. Yeah. Um, I think what I'd like to do is for you to play the shot that you described yes. with this bowl here, and then when you played that, we'll reconstruct the head and you can perhaps play the, the weighty shot to illustrate how difficult it is. It isn't as easy as it looks, the no, weighty shot, no, is it? No, it looks easy. Uh, sometimes the easier shots are the hardest to play. Right. And, um, but it would be a good shot to take that out to, to bring in a count. And uh, it might sometimes, when you play the heavy shot against your opponent, it kind of upsets them. Yes, yes. And, uh, a lot of people, I mean, it breaks their rhythm. If they're drawing really close to the jack all the time and your opponent keeps knocking you off, yeah. it's, a, it's a bit of a thump in the belly, isn't it? It is indeed. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, take that bowl, play the first option, which is the, the draw to turn, <laughs> turn the bowls over, which I would say a lot of ladies would opt to play in the ladies' the word, game. Yes. Uh -huh. um, and then, as you say, the second, as we said, the second shot, you can play weight.
Brilliant shot, Margaret. That was a fine example of just using a little bit of weight, enough weight, in fact, to Turn lift the bowl here. a few times. But really, were you actually drawing that shot? No, just a couple of feet of running. Right. Because she needed that to, when you made contact with the bowl, to shift it. Right. Now the other alternative we talked about, shall we put this bowl back to where it was, approximately? You'd agree it was about there, was it? And the other more difficult shot is the power shot. Yeah. And um, something which ladies don't often play. I've seen you play it often enough. So perhaps you're going to play it again. Right. I'll have a go. I'm yeah. pleased I'm not playing you in a championship game today. <laughs> that was superb. A fine example of the weight shot. In fact, the semi-drive, you know, cutting the bias, having a go for it, chancing your arm, and perfect execution, well played. Yeah, you find uh, sometimes through a game that you uh, are offered a chance like that and it's worthwhile taking it. Yeah, it certainly was because then. Because it means, it could mean a lot at the end of the game. We started this film talking about team play and about ladies' play. I've invited six colleagues from the club here in Birmingham to join us this afternoon. And I hope you don't mind, Margaret, but I've put you down as one of the skips. Terrific. Let's go and meet them. The beauty of the game of bowls is that everyone can play, whatever their age or physical ability. It's a great family game, and today's no exception. Amongst our colleagues here from the club in Birmingham, we have a mother and daughter, Anne and Sally, and a father and son, Mark and Tony. They're actually going to play with Margaret and myself. Of course, the ladies on Margaret's side and the men on mine. It's a real challenge. Mark and Sally are actually going to play lead. They're going to be responsible for delivering the jack and bowling the first bowls. Margaret you're going to be the skip of your rink. What will you be expecting your lead to do for you? Well, I expect Sally to uh, get as near as possible to the jack. About two or three inches would be suitable. <laughs> <laughs> one in front of it and one behind it. <laughs> and of course, the responsibility of a lead will be to deliver the jack. And of course, yes. whoever wins the toss of the two of them will have the choice of delivering the jack yeah. or, or going second. That's right. And of course, when we're skipping, as we will be, uh, we'll expect them to be delivering the jack more or less to where we tell them. That's right. So are you listening, Leeds? The second position is Sharad for me and Margaret for Margaret. The second is obviously a very difficult position. A lot of people will tell you it's where to put beginners. I totally disagree. I'm sure you t do, Margaret, as well, don't you? Yes, I count a second, a second skip because she has to play a variety of shots sometimes because if your lead misses the drawn shot, she has to draw. If the uh, opposing lead has two close shots, she might have to open the head. And uh, it is a very important position and not a position to take lightly. No. The second is responsible in the rink for keeping the score and they have to have a good pen and be able to count as well. Can you do that? <laughs> good. The third position, that's the third man or the third lady, in this case, Tony and Anne, has really another difficult position. The third man or lady has to be the vice captain of the rink, has to closely liaise with the skip, in this case myself and Margaret, and has to have a very good understanding of the game. What do you look for, Margaret, in the third man or lady that's playing in your ring? Well, the third, as sometimes the second, they have a variety of shots also. Uh, drawn positional bowls, opening ahead, drawn, if you're lying, drawn another shot. 
And it's not easy, I must admit, but uh, perhaps we expect so much of our thirds, but they do their best, just the same as a skip does their best. And don't always come off, but... And going on to the skip, or the skipper or leader of the rink, his or her duty is in fact to direct, to be the conductor of the great orchestra in front of them. They should bring the best out of the players and be encouraging at all times, but not forgetting that they're also expected to perform and invariably have to carry the can if things go wrong. Margaret, I wonder who will be carrying the can today, whether it be you or whether it be me. Well, I hope it's you. Thank you very much. <laughs> what are you going to call them? We'll start Head. again. Head. Tell it is. What shall we do, Mark? Shall we take the jack or give it away? Take the jack. We'll take the jack. Well done, Mark. That's certainly a good opening bowl, Mark. Just a fraction more green next time, and the weight's about right. Come on, looking good, up you come, oh nice try girl, well played, you're jack high. Mark, before you deliver this next bowl, just make sure that your, your back foot is in the middle of the mat, you are very near to the, to the front of the mat and your foot has got to be on or over the mat when you actually deliver your bowl. So I don't want you to get into the habit of foot folding, folding. So make sure that, that your foot is right in the middle of the mat. All right. Same again, just a little bit wider. OK, nice try. Just probably a touch wide, but nevertheless, you did correct, and that was good. Sally, your weight's good. Just pick a shade more green. Looking good again. Come on. Oh, well played. Well played. Margaret, would you say that as a, you know, was a good bowl from a lead? Because she was, I mean, she got the line right, but she yes. was considerably heavy, wasn't she? Well, her bowl followed the jack, and uh, I consider it quite a good bowl because yes. she is holding shot. Yep, and the line was right. The line was right, yeah. Just slightly heavy, but still her bowl went with the jack. Sharad, the jack has moved slightly off centre now, so the green that you took in the trial ends is, is slightly changed. So you have to take a narrower line because the jack is further over onto the left-hand side. Just try and draw as close as you can. Try and build this head up. We're two down. Ah, oh, certainly a good try. Just a fraction of running next time, but remember that line. It was pretty good. Margaret, we hold shot. Bulls jack high. Just up to it. Your line was good, another two yards. You often get that with a number two. They see that the lead's right yes, on, and they're uh, frightened they're of knocking frightened, it off, yes. aren't they, really? But ideally, you do want your number two to Three. reach, either to turn that ball nearer or to put one just around the or back. Around the back, it? yes, for position. How's your memory? Good. Same line, just a little more weight. I'll tell you what. 
We're not far off with this. Bend now. Bend. You can stay on. That will be a very good bowl. Okay, Sharad, you watch, that'll be good. Right, Margaret, don't worry if you're around the back. If the jacks move, it'll go back and not go forward. That's your line, looking good. Come on, come on. On up. Oh, it's a cracker, well played. And another toucher. Margaret, I see you using this special spray. Yes, uh, I got it out in New Zealand. And it is good because if you get a bowl at an upward angle, you don't have to touch it to mark it. Because a lot of people uh, accuse you of tumbling their bowl and when it comes to measure it could be very vital the end so it's ideal so when my player gets to touch it don't forget to mark it yes I'll All give right. him a puff Tony we are two shots down but one thing for sure about this bowl that you're not going to get anything through being short so you want to try and arrive to this jack just with a little bit of weight remembering we have got a back bowl just try and draw it, just remembering to be slightly overweight. If you, if you miss the jack and go through, it's a better fault than being short. I'll tell you what, Tony, Margaret's going to be using this chalk again, I think. Come on. Oh, that's very good. Well done. Definitely on now. Three shots against. Um, now that bowl is a good yard, short. Just draw around it. You can do it, no problem. That's Jack High. Come in, come on. Come on. Now your whip was perfect, Jack. Hey, you just need to tighten your green slightly. Tony, that's our bowl a yard away, but I actually like that bowl because it's, it's almost in the way of the line to the jack. As a guide, bearing in mind that we're on a green perhaps where we haven't played before, we're on new territory over here, I would deliver your bowl at that one there. Take that as your guide for the green. And if you do that and your weight's right, you're sure to finish somewhere inside and to count another. All right, fortunate, very, very fortunate. Lucky. Right on. Use that for your green. And you'll keep your weight. The weight was perfect. Come on. Now slip inside it. Come on. Easy now, easy. Oh, well, a shot. Well done. Great bowl. Oh, well, Margaret, I don't think there's much option here other than to uh, draw the shot for me. Yeah. I can't see that red bowl. I can't see that red sh shot bowl from the mat. So I think we've got a drawing game, you and I. Yes. Off we go. I'll wait for you, play. All right. Lucky again. Yes, I know it's difficult with that bowl, but when you're up, you see it's about three to four yes. feet short. Yes, yes. but it looked near. Yes, uh huh. Oh. 
Not when quite enough short. weight, I don't think. Giving you a chance. Yes, you are indeed. If this bowl looks like it's um, coming quite near, um, Shara, don't clap, will you? <laughs> it's the opposition. <laughs> She certainly bowled very wide to avoid any of our white bowls that might be in the way. Actually, that's a lovely bowl. Well played, Margaret. Yes. That's right. Uh -huh. the, the, the good shot about that, actually, is that if she'd have put it close to the jack, I might have had a target. I might have been able to get through a gap and take her out. But unfortunately, she's forced my hand. I've got to try and just get a length bowl around that and uh, hopefully get the shot. That bowl, I said, was a good bowl at one time when we were laying the shot. That's the bowl that's difficult for me now. I could have just swerved by it. I'll try and do my best, lads. Yeah. <laughs> you could drive a bus through it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Miss it. Mm. Miss it. Oh, well said. Well, girls, what will I do? Yeah, I could see a running shot just missing that and get her into the ditch. But they have the best back one. Or even if I got the ball. I'll try it, you rascal. Actually, Tony, I, I was a bit lucky there because. I wanted a clear road. I wanted to avoid that road, but, but actually my weight was good and I glided. But uh, I well, you have to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, she won't be short at this. No. Nothing to gain through being short. Oh, she's, not that she's one. Got, she's unlucky, oh. unlucky. <laughs> Too. Unlucky, Margaret. You didn't yeah. have, you know, you, you had lots of rocks in the way there and you didn't have yes. a lot of chance. But I needed the gap. Well done, lads. Two shots. Well done, Mark. It's a good jack straight to my feet. Margaret, we won the end last time, so we have to take the jack. Don't you think it's fairer that we had the choice whether we take the jack, rather like when we spun up for jack at the beginning of the game? Yes, I think it's fair enough. Uh, if I had a, a rule to change in our laws of the game, I would actually sort of say, well, the person that won the previous end should have the choice. choice. Well, sometimes it would pay and sometimes it wouldn't, so That's I true. think the rules as, as the stand. You, you have yeah, to with them. Happy yeah, happy enough. I'd like to see yeah. a change. Right, mate. Ready now. Okay, Mark, it's, you've threw the jack slightly shorter, and that was exactly the length before. So remember that green, it was excellent. Looking good, Sally. Come on. In you come. Come on. Oh, nice ball, girl. Nice ball. Foot and a half. Same line, Mark. Just take a little bit of weight off. Well, 
Seem to have corrected pretty well here. That's the idea. Well played indeed. Good lad. Great bowl. Sally still stay in the backhand. That ball's only half a ball short of Jack High. Just inside it. Come on, looking good. Come in. Well, that's okay. It's a good back ball. Sharad, I want you to just to try and draw with the first ball. Don't worry about the fact that they've got two nice red balls waiting for the jack. I want you to try and draw as close as you can so when the next person comes on the mat, they're really under pressure. So make sure this is a very close ball. Ideally, ideally, we would like that ball just moved to there. But if you put another ball into that head, I'll be very, very pleased. Looks good. Yep, a little bit on the wide side, but nevertheless, you've done exactly what I asked. Not quite. Only well, still one. Lucky. Is that ball in your eye, Margaret? I'm trying to get around it. No, I want you inside it. Just play inside it. Come on. Come on. Your line was good. Another yard. Actually, it, it, it was a good shot because yes. she, she had to think of bringing the line in, uh -huh. didn't she? Bringing, she did. bringing the bowl in yes. to avoid that. But it, that's often the case. We do that, don't we? We get the line right and forget the weight. Yes. True, true. Or, or vice uh -huh. versa. We get the weight right and yes. just forget the get line. The line. So, I always think it's a good sign with somebody who's just beginning. If they get one element right, yes. it's easy to correct next time. It's when they get both that the problem starts. <laughs> but again, Sharad, a little bit more, just a little touch more running, and you can hopefully get inside your own bowl now. All right, Sharad, one thing I'd like to say to you is it's very good. It, it was a bad bowl, and you knew it was not correct from the moment it left your hand, but you watched it very carefully. All too often, people see it's going to be a bad bowl and turn their back on it and walk away rather self-consciously to get out of the way to clear the mat for the next person. But you watched that bowl until it, it had actually finished, remembering that it's your prerogative to watch that bowl. It's your mat until that bowl comes to rest then the rules say you must either be behind the mat or behind the head. But that was very good. You did, you did watch your mistake, and that's where we learn from our mistakes. Margaret, your line was perfect. Just put a yard on it. This is our ball. If you carry the jack back, don't worry. Come on. Looking good. Come on. You're trying. Come on. Still that yard. Your line was perfect. Tony, I'm going to still bring you that side because that bowl now is clearly blocked that side completely and there's no advantage to us at all other than to play the red balls up. You've got to remember as number three that we are very vulnerable if the jack comes through. But I'd like to see another one very close here. We're only one shot and at the moment if that bowl goes we're going to lose the shot anyway. So I would, with your first bowl, put a good shot in, well remembering that if you put one in, the next bowl will have to be round the back. Make sure this counts. Big effort now. Well, Certainly time for change. <laughs> Once again, fortune's on our side. Change to your forehand. Now that front ball is a yard and a half short. 
No problem. Just your weight, that's all. Car in about five yards. Hold on, Tony. Let me take a careful look at this. The thing is, if our bowl is taken out through that hole, we're going to lose the shot with that bowl there. So I would suggest to you that we want another one in, a drawn shot. Now, you've played this hand very well, but on this occasion, I'm going to ask you to take a new territory, change the forehand, because really those bowls are pretty dangerous. If you tap them up, it's going to be in our opposition's, um, to our opposition's advantage. So I would play around there, just a draw shot. If you turn that bowl, that's fine, that's our bowl. Just a draw, remembering that you were very heavy last time. That was a lovely line, but a change of shot, a change of hand, you just forgot about the weight again. Right, and um, just bring a tear night of Tony's eye. Just draw one on the nose of it. Looking good. Come on. Well, you never know. Come on. Push it up. Oh, that's another good sign. Well, Margaret, yeah. that was a, a good bowl for you in as much that it's given you another one close, but uh, I does, don't think... It I, does away with the drive. It does away with the drive. It blocks that line to take our bowl out. So in many ways, it's a mixed blessing. You've got the second wood, your, your drive's blocked, I'm going to try and draw another one in. Lucky again, Tony. It's our lucky day today, you know. Hard luck, Al. Just nip your green a wee bit, but your weight would have done. Good what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, I'm not telling you. No, although I didn't get another one in, Tony, I intended to, so it was a bit of a mistake, but I made sure I was enough weight. So to she, yeah, to cover the back. If she draws the jack through now, we've got a good waiting bowl. And she's not far away, as expected. Very close here. Very close. Oh. Well, yeah. well, it was... Uh, we've got the luck. We've got the luck again. Yes, but the only thing that bothers me now, Margaret, is that I guess you're going to be coming down this hand here with a bit of weight hoping to get that jack to your back bowl, aren't you? Yeah, how did you guess? <laughs> well, Tony, we've got two choices here. This is a classic example. We've got two choices. We're either going to put a bowl down with that furthest red back bowl there in case she gets the jack, or I'm going to try and draw another one to create an obstacle. That bowl at the back is going to take a very, very good bowl to be further to the ditch because it's only that much away so realistically speaking I'm not going to get any further back than that bowl without going into the ditch so I feel that tells me to try and get another one in if I can try and just cover the jack to stop the target then that's the best shot to play is that yes. the shot that you would play yes I would I'm hoping I could get round there yes I think I'm going to try and get inside this bowl and even if I'm short and stop there, at least it's in the eye. Do you agree, team? Yes. 
You do. Because years ago, you know, the number ones and twos were never allowed to participate in the game. When I first started, I was told if I was playing lead or second that when I played my bowls, to get onto the bank and not to participate. But the modern day game is that everybody's involved. Team One, effort. two, three and four. A real team effort. Had a good ball. Yeah. Maybe it give it to oh. Well, it wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, not a very good shot, that. Well, Anne, I have an option. Bowler Jack. I have position. Oh. The shot's against me, and if I slice the jack well, I could go to here, but still we're only one down. The shot's... I can't see me pick my own ball out to lose three. I'll just... Yeah, a couple of... Couple of yards around. Of course, she will have realised by now, of course, that me knocking that bowl up has given her opportunity, if she's slightly wide, she'll play the wick and the plant shot. It'll bring her back onto the jack. It was far better before because there was a nice gap, but I played a bad short shot and I'll probably have to pay the penalty for it now. Oh dear, she's very yeah, close right. here. I hope you get wrecked on these front bowls, Margaret, otherwise you've got it. <laughs> well played, that's a brilliant shot. Congratulations, well, very good, all square, that's right. Margaret, we've had a great afternoon and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm sure our family, who were once at war, are now a family at peace. Well, hopefully, and they all enjoyed it. That's what art, the art of bowls is all about, enjoying the game, isn't enjoying it? Enjoying it, yes. It's nice to win, but to enjoy it as the aim. In this highly competitive game, which it can be, um, it's surprising that we don't get a lot of gamesmanship, do we? No. Uh, sportsmanship is the 100%. Yeah. Margaret, before you go, something I must ask, about, ask you is this afternoon we've noticed that you haven't got that white hat on that lady bowlers often wear. Thankfully, no. <laughs> I would like to see it done away with, especially when, when we're bowling outdoor, because if it's Monday, as you get down to bowl, up goes the hat and it destroys your concentration. But unfortunately, we have to persevere with this hat. And that's a shame because a lot of young ladies who want to play the game will not be seen dead with that hat on, would they? You're dead, right? Margaret, I've enjoyed your company. Thanks ever so much for a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Bless you. Well, that just about rounds off the series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. We started with basics, looking at bowls and equipment, and everything a bowler might need. With the help of Brian Duncan, Wynn Richards, and my club colleague from Cheltenham, Andrew Wills, we looked at the shots to play, how to play them, when to play them, and when not to play them. With the help of Margaret Johnson, we looked at the ladies' game. What a fine ambassador of the game she is. We moved on to the team game, exploring the different positions a member of the team would take. It isn't easy for a top player like myself to explain the various happenings in bowls. And please remember that we don't know everything. We're always learning. And furthermore, remember what I always say, keep it simple. This is where it all began. <laughs>